Wow, has it been one month already since the last newsletter? That one month really flew by, huh? <clears throat> anyway, let's jump into the latest Lovecraft news. The Lovecraft statue. A while ago, I made a video about how the Providence Athenaeum was planning to remove the bust of H.P. Lovecraft that it was famous for displaying. The Athenaeum was, of course, one of Lovecraft's favorite places to go to when he was alive, and nowadays it's kind of a hotspot for Lovecraft tourists, though sadly when I was there I didn't really get to see much of it, I only saw the exterior. For context, the planned removal of the bus came in the recent era of American politics where it was cool for people to go around pulling down statues left and right of figures that they found problematic. Since then a few of you have asked me to follow up on this video that I did, and well I did just that. I couldn't find any news articles on this issue or any answers that way, so I figured, why don't I just call the place and find out? That's what I did. Now, I'm not sure about the legality of recording a voice call. I don't want to get into trouble with YouTube or get my video removed. So I looked it up and in Rhode Island law, where the Athenium is located, um, it says as long as one party consents to being recorded, then it's okay. So, hey, Damien, do you consent to being recorded? Well, yes, yes, I do. I do consent to that. All right, legal bits is out the way. So this is the voice call that I had with someone at the Athenium. Hello, um, uh, is this the Providence Athenium? Yes, it is. Hi, uh, I'm just calling to ask a couple questions. Um, I remember reading uh, in an article last year, I think this was when uh, the Athenium was closed uh, due to Corona, that there was some question about uh, what to do with a statue that was there of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. And I'm just, mm. what they were talking about whether it would be kept up or if it would be... Um, removed or something like that. I'm just interested to know if the statue is still there or if it's been moved. Um, it is still in our possession, but it's actually um, a whole bunch of the busts that we own are actually being sort of, um, uh, what's the word, like not quite restored, but just like cleaned and, and like prepped and stuff because there wasn't anyone in the building. And right. I think, I think um, Lovecraft is in storage right now because of that process. But okay. we do still have the bust, yeah. Okay, but uh, it's just that I read this article, I think it was on, on a Providence News website, that the, that they were thinking about what to do with the future because uh, of, of Lovecraft's uh, past and all that sort of stuff. Do you know if there's mm -hmm. going to be any changes at all made to it or any plaque attached to it explaining things? or? You know, I... I mean, I just, I'm someone who works at the circulation desk here, and I don't, I'm not really involved in those kinds of decisions. Okay. Um, but if you are the person you could reach out to who would know more about that, I can, mm -hmm. I can give you an email address if you'd want to contact them. That would actually be um, quite helpful, yeah. So it seems like the statue hasn't been altered or anything like that. That's good. Um, I was also given an email to contact someone who could better answer my questions, but as of writing them on Saturday, June the 12th, I've gotten no reply. So if I do get one, I'll let you guys know, but so far, that's all the information I have about the statue. Francois Barranger's At the Mountains of Madness Part 2. Where is this book? What's happening? First of all, for context, if you're new to this issue, Francois Barringer is a French artist of immense talent who has been creating art books of Lovecraft's tales. He started with The Call of Cthulhu and then released part 1 of At the Mountains of Madness with a due date for part 2 having passed long ago. I've looked on the American and the British Amazon page, nothing. I've looked on Book Depository, nothing, except for some Spanish copies. I've looked at what seems to be the website where he does sales, nothing. So, living up to my reporter title, I actually messaged the author on Instagram, and this is the response I got. So, it seems for the English speakers, we will have to wait until November to get a copy. If you've missed my reviews of his Call of Cthulhu and Part 1 of At the Mountains of Madness adaptations, then check the video links in the description below, which will also include a link where you can buy the books at a good price with free international shipping. But, you know what? I do actually own part 2 of At the Mountains of Madness. Yes, I do, but it's in Russian. No, I don't speak Russian, but I will learn it, as my uh, Sonia Green, as I could call her, is Russian. You see, I was traveling around Moscow this year. Beautiful city, really beautiful. I heard the faint beating of hard bass from a bookstore, 
I approached the bookshop doors and was jostled by a nautical looking slav, but I managed to get a copy of the book. And yes, it is a beautiful book, truly. I will make a quick video on the book after I upload this video, just to show the English speakers what to expect, sort of like a teaser trailer I guess you could call it. However, if you speak Spanish, I will also put a link in the video description where you can get part 2 of At the Mountains of Madness, as I said, with free worldwide shipping. In the meantime, if you've got some cash to spend, Francois Barringer is selling large prints of his art from At the Mountains of Madness Part 2, signed, numbered and limited to 60 copies. I've recently put in an order for one, uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, hell, maybe I'll make even just like a 30 second video just showing it off. Anyway guys, that's all I have to say uh, for that issue. A modern mythos recommendation. This month there is a release of a trilogy of books by Australian weird fiction writer David Conyers. His trilogy of books are titled Cthulhu Reloaded, Cthulhu Resurgent and Cthulhu Remorseless. I mention these releases especially because many people ask me to recommend some modern weird fiction writers and mythos writers and after going through the trilogy and researching a bit about the writings it seems like I can recommend it. To me, these stories reminded me a bit of those adventure novels by Clive Cussler, high in action and events, though of course here it's darker in tone, being focused on the mythos, and all led by a dominating lead character. In the case of these Cthulhu books, the reoccurring hero is Harrison Peel. Of course, it is all linked to the mythos and the figures therein, and though these stories might not read exactly like a Lovecraft tale in tone, I think they definitely hold up as legit contributions to the mythos. I'll put the links below where you can pick up the trilogy on Amazon, but I'm told that they are also available through the Kobo ebook store. The Deep Ones on DVD. June sees the DVD and digital release of the recent film H.P. Lovecraft's The Deep Ones. Now, I haven't seen the film, but I saw the trailer and I must admit I felt no guilt in hitting the thumbs down button. And that like to dislike ratio isn't exactly the healthiest either. But I figured that just because I dislike something, it doesn't mean others are going to dislike it as well. So I might as well mention it. At least it doesn't seem to be infected with identity politics, which is sadly something we need to look out for these days when there's a new release. So there's that. It looks like a proud B-movie, so if that's your type of thing, now you have something to watch tonight. The popularity of the Call of Cthulhu RPG in Japan. This isn't really news as such, but an article that I found and I thought it was interesting and worth talking about. We all know the Call of Cthulhu RPG, right? If you don't, it's a long-running role-playing game developed by Sandy Peterson, who is also on YouTube by the way, and makes a lot of great Lovecraft content, so go check out his page. Well, the game is a worldwide hit, and in Japan, it is now the most popular foreign tabletop RPG ever, even more than the Dungeons & Dragons franchise. The sales for the game in Japan in the Japanese language outsells all the sales of Call of Cthulhu RPG in all other languages, and that's including English. It's unbelievable. What else was interesting was that the most popular demographic for playing the game are women aged between 17 and 35, which is kind of unexpected since in my personal experience doing the whole YouTube thing for years and interacting with a lot of fans, it seems to be that the Lovecraft scene is very male dominated. Well, Japan's a very interesting place. I'd made a whole video about the Japanese love for Lovecraft, uh, it's one of my better videos I believe, I'll put a link where you can go watch that as well. So there you go lads, are we packing our bags and moving to Japan to play Call of Cthulhu in a maid cafe? The first round of warm sake is on me. Warm sake? Very good! Anyway, that's all I have for this edition of the Lovecraft Newsletter. Once again, all relevant links are to be found in this video's description. Be sure to also have a look at my channels on alternative websites which I am also active on and uploading to, perhaps with some exclusive content in the future. I also have an Instagram page which I'll be revitalizing with some short and quick content and is also the most direct and fast way to contact me if you have any reason to do so. If you have any news to share for future videos, please email me at arkhamreporter at yahoo.com. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you later on in the comment section. Cheers.